we have two particles, P and Q. P has a mass of three kilograms, so I'll draw its weight force, that's three G. And then Q has a mass of M kilograms, Mg. We're told that M is bigger than three. We're then given our modeling assumptions, all standard stuff, pulleys are connected by a light and extensible string, smooth light fixed pulley, and then we're told that it's held at rest to begin with, so it starts at rest, string is taut, the string is vertical. We're told the distance of Q above the ground, we're given that on our diagram, and then we're told that the system is released from rest and then Q moves downwards, which is to be expected as it is the heavier mass, so yes, we do expect the whole thing to go around this way. We're then told the tension in the string, and just before that we're told that when P goes up, it does not reach the pulley. Okay, so let's draw the tension on as well, so tension is 33 0.6 newtons. And we're trying to show for part A that the magnitude of the acceleration of P is 1.4 meters per second squared. So if you look at P, if you look at the forces on P, let's just draw on the acceleration. So we know that Q is going to go downwards, P will go upwards. That's the direction in which P will accelerate. And Q accelerates downwards. So if P is accelerating upwards, then there must be a resultant upwards force. So the overall upwards force would be 33.6 minus 3G, and that will be equal to MA, 3 times A. And then we can just rearrange this equation for A. So A is then equal to 33.6 minus 3G, all divided by 3, and that ends up being 1.4 meters per second squared. For part B, find the value of m. So let's do a similar thing for q. But first of all, I'm just going to change the accelerations. Now we have those two values. So we have this is 1.4, as is the acceleration for p, but just in the opposite direction. OK. So then, considering the equation of motion for q, it's accelerating downwards. Therefore, mg is the bigger force. mg minus 33.6 is the overall downwards force. That's the resultant force. Equal to ma, equal to m times 1.4. And then we want to rearrange for m. So I'll bring this term to the left, this term to the right. So subtract m times 1.4. Add 33.6 to both sides. I can factorize out the left-hand side, because remember we're trying to rearrange 4m. So factorize the left-hand side. And now these two things are multiplied together, so I can divide by g minus 1.4. m is then 33.6 all over g minus 1.4. Type this in with g being 9.8, and we get 4. OK, on to part c. So part C says the system is released from rest at time t is equal to zero. At time t1 after release, Q strikes the ground and does not rebound. Okay, so Q travels downwards. It travels a distance of 10.5 meters, hits the ground, and P will go up by the same distance. It then says the string goes slack and P continues to move upwards. So P will have some momentum when Q hits the ground and P will then continue to move upwards the string becomes slack. As Q is no longer pulling down on the string, the string becomes loose. And then P will just continue to move up with the only force acting on it being its weight. The weight force slows it down and eventually it will stop. But we're not looking at that part. We're just looking at the part from when the system is released to when Q strikes the ground. We're just after that time. So let's consider our SUVAC quantities. The distance we know, 10.5, it's released from rest. The final velocity we don't know. The acceleration we worked out as 1.4. And the time we're trying to work out. So we have S U A, we're trying to work out T. So we use S is equal to U T plus half A T squared. U is zero. So then the equation becomes s is equal to half at squared, 
And I'm going to rearrange for t now. So times both sides by 2. 2s two is a t squared. Divide by a. 2s over a is t squared. And finally, square root. t is 2s all over a. And then we just put in our numbers. So t is the square root of 2 times 10.5 all over a, which is 1.4. And this ends up being root 15, which is about 3.873 seconds. And that's part C done. So on to D. At time t 2 seconds after release, p comes to instantaneous rest. Find the value of t2. So the time t2 is after release, so we release the objects, and then q goes down and hits the floor. That takes 3.873 seconds, and then p will continue to move upwards because it has some velocity still. It will eventually stop. That extra time, which we're going to work out next, we want to add that to the 3.873, and that will be the overall time from when the system is released to then when p comes to rest. So let's start by writing our SUVAC quantities. s we don't know, and we're not interested in s. We don't want to work out distance, we want to work out time. The initial speed we don't know. The final speed we know is zero because it comes to rest. The acceleration, so remember that the string becomes slack. If the string is slack, which should make sense, because remember that Q hits the ground, it's no longer pulling on the string. If the string becomes slack, there's no more tension in it, and therefore P only experiences its own weight downwards. If it only experiences its own weight, the acceleration on P would just be 9.8. Let's make that negative 9.8. Let's say the upwards direction is the positive direction. For these kinds of SUVAC questions, we want to pick a positive direction and then stick to it for the rest of the calculation. And we're trying to work out what t is. So we only have two quantities. Whenever we are trying to work out something using SUVA, we always have to have three quantities. The initial speed of this stage, we can actually work out. It's the final speed from the first stage. So whatever speed that q hits the floor with, that will be the speed of p going upwards, and that will be the initial speed for the calculation that we are about to do. So let's go back to these SUVAC quantities and then work out what v would be. We can use v squared is u squared plus 2as. u is 0, so v squared is just 2as. And then v would be root 2as. V would be root, so 2 times A, which is 1.4, and S, which is 10.5. And we end up with our speed being 5.422 meters per second. So that would be our initial speed for the second stage, 5.42, etc. And now we can use SUVAT, because now we have three quantities. We have one unknown. We can use v is equal to u plus at to then work out what t is. So v is equal to u plus at. I'm going to rearrange for t. v minus u all over a is equal to t. That's rearranging this equation for t. t is then going to be, so v is 0 minus u 5.422. Now I set this to be positive because p is moving upwards to begin with until it stops. We set the upwards direction to be positive, hence why I'm keeping this as a positive quantity. And then remember again, acceleration is downwards and that's why it's negative. So that all divided by a, which is minus 9.8. And we end up with this time being 0 0.553 seconds. We want the total time after release. So then we add up stage one's time to stage two's time to get our answer. So t2 is equal to these two things added together and that would be 
seconds. For part E, it says at time t3 seconds after release, where t3 is bigger than t1, the string becomes taut again. We want to sketch a velocity time graph for p in that time interval. So I'm going to split this up into three stages. Stage one is when q travels down the uh, distance of 10.5 meters and it hits the ground, and therefore p travels up by the same distance. So actually we've written some of these SUVAC quantities before. So P travels a distance upwards of 10.5 meters. We have that over here. It starts at rest, so U is zero. The final velocity we worked out in a previous part. So for these set of SUVAC quantities, we worked out that the final speed was 5.422. So that was the final speed of P after stage one. The acceleration we had from before as well, that was 1.4, and the time we worked out to be 3.873 seconds. Stage 2, I'm going to say stage 2 is when P then travels a, dis a further distance up and then becomes stationary. So maybe what we can do is we can write these things on our diagram. So I'm going to put stage 1 in orange. P starts here, it travels a distance upwards of 10.5 meters. That is stage one. Stage two, I'll put in purple. So stage two is when the ball starts off here, P starts off here, it then travels upwards to here. The speed at that point is zero. So it momentarily comes to rest before it falls back down. For the purple stage, because Q has hit the ground, the string is slack. Q is no longer pulling on the string. P is moving up with its own momentum. There is no more tension in the string, and the acceleration was 9.8 downwards. And we already looked at that calculation in part D. So let's write down our super quantities. So the distance we didn't work out, I'm gonna call it X. Let's say that in the stage where P travels up until it's stationary, the distance traveled is X meters. The initial speed was the final speed of the previous stage. So 5.422. And because it comes to rest when it reaches the top, its final speed will be zero. And as there's no more tension, the acceleration will be minus 9.8. Again, as there's no tension, the only force acting on P is its weight. And so the acceleration would be 9.8 downwards. And then we worked out the time for this stage to be 0 0.553 seconds. And the final stage, stage three. So then for stage three, what's happening is, let's put this in uh, blue. For stage three, so the object is here. Its initial speed is zero, it's stationary to begin with. It then travels back down the exact same distance of X meters until the string becomes taut again. So we know that the distance or the displacement is minus X. The initial speed is zero, it starts at rest. For the final speed, let's consider an object that's launched up in the air and then lands back down to the exact same height that it started at. So let's say it's on level ground. The fact that it travels horizontally will not affect this argument that we're about to go through. So the ball has some kinetic energy to begin with. And if you remember back to GCSE physics, energy is conserved. It's only transferred from one form to another. So this kinetic energy will turn into gravitational potential energy at the top. And then if we drop through the exact same height, whatever gravitational potential energy that we have gained, we would lose the exact same amount. And therefore we will have the exact same kinetic energy that we started with at the end point. And if we have the exact same kinetic energy, then the final speed will just be 5.422, but it will be downwards. So negative 5.422. There is still no tension in the string. Remember that the string went slack at the beginning of stage two. The object then moved up a distance of x, and now it's coming back down that same distance of x. At the end of stage three, that's when the string will become taut again. So the acceleration will then just be minus 9.8. And the time, the journey is symmetrical, so the time it takes to get to this point is the same as the time it takes to get back down to here. So we know that the time for stage two 
was 0.553 seconds, the time for stage 3 should be the same. Okay, so with this information, we can then plot our graph. So we're plotting velocity against time. So we know that our object starts at rest to begin with. Acceleration represents the gradient of our graph. So the acceleration to begin with is 1.4. So it's not as steep as it is later on. We know our final speed is 5.422, and the time that this takes is 3.873. So shallow gradient endpoint here, this is 3.87 seconds. And the speed that it reaches is 5.42 meters per second. And then the gradient becomes negative for both of these stages. So that means that for stage two and for stage three, it should be the same straight line. For stage two, the final speed is zero. So negative gradient, and that takes 0 0.553 seconds. So then that would look something like this. I've made this line a bit steeper than this one. That line then continues. So this is now stage three, what we have here to a final speed of minus 5.422. And then we just write down our times and velocities, and then we're done. So this is minus 5.42. To work out this time, we just add these two things. And actually, we had worked that out in the previous part. That was t2, which was 4.43 seconds. And then finally, this time, add on 0 0.553 one more time, and we end up with 4.98 seconds. That's it.